Hello, and welcome to the Dell EMC PowerServe video for Import External Storage. In this video, we will go over an overview of the native import feature, then provide a demo of importing a block storage resource from a VNX2 system, and end with additional resources. Initially, host clients might have their data for their applications in an assistant Dell EMC storage system and will want to move the application data to PowerStore. The PowerStore's native import feature can be leveraged to migrate the data to PowerStore. Here are the main components in order to accomplish the import. First, you have a Dell EMC source system that may require a software upgrade. In this video, we will use a VNX2 as an example. Then, the clients will need to have a host plugin installed. This plugin will collaborate with the PowerStore system through the orchestrator, which is the native software that manages the end-to-end -end workflow of the import. For more information, please see the Importing External Storage to PowerStore guide on the PowerStore Info Hub. Here are additional connectivity details for the import. The front-end connectivity can be either iSCSI or fiber channel. It will depend on the type of source system and the host plugin in use and the type used must match between the source and destination systems. For the backend connectivity, iSCSI will be leveraged to transmit the data between the two storage systems. We have talked about so far a little bit about the setup details and about the connectivity. Now we'll give an intro into the process flow to help complete the import workflow. First, there's a setup. In the case of leveraging fiber channel for the front end, FC zoning might be required between the client and the power source system. Also, keep in mind that the ISCSI connectivity between the source system and the power source will be potentially new in the environment. Lastly, the installation of the host plugin in each client accessing the source block resources. In the second step, as part of the import, once the host plugin is installed, the source system can be added to power store. Then, the import workflow can be followed, which will include the selection of the source and resource to import. Once the user clicks the Begin Import button, the import starts, which will create an import session. As part of that creation of the import session, a pathlet happens to the power source system, and the background copy starts moving the data from the source system to the power source system. Once the data from the source is in sync with the power source, the import job becomes ready to cut over, and the user can cut over to the power source system. Once the user does cut over to the power source system, there's no way to cancel or roll back that import session. Keep in mind that the user does have the option to select an auto cut over option when selecting the source resources. Now, let's go over a demonstration of importing a LUN from a VNX2 system. Let's navigate to the VNX2 unit sphere to review the different LUNs that are in the system. Now let's confirm that the different LUNs can be accessed from a host client, which we have already installed the host plugin. Notice that a video in the LUN can be played. Let's proceed to the PowerSer Manager to review the current state of the system. Let's log in and confirm that there are no volumes currently in the system by navigating to the volumes page on the storage. In order to start the import, let's navigate to migration, import external storage. The first step is to add our source system as a remote system. Now we select the type VNX, then provide the management IP address, the iSCSI IP address with access to the power source system and provide the credentials, including username and password. In our case, we won't be leveraging CHAP, so we can leave the default values and click Add. Next, we confirm the certificate received from the source system by clicking Confirm. In the next step, we check the Verify Alternate IP Address option in order to confirm the second storage processor on the source system is accessible and also check the fetch volumes option 
which will retrieve the list of lines that can be imported as volume into PowerStore. We confirm the secondary storage processor by clicking Confirm. Once the system is shown in the list, we can select it and click the Import Storage button, which will open the Import Volumes from Source Array Wizard. In the first step, we can go ahead and select the volume we will be importing. In this case, boss-testing and click next. We won't be adding it to a volume group, so we can go ahead and proceed to the next step by clicking next. Whole step, we will add the client which already has the host plugin installed by clicking add host and verify certificate button. We provide the IP address for the host Keep the default port to A443 and keep the operating system type to Windows and click Fetch Certificate button. We select the host we just provided and click the Fetch Certificate button. The certificate is shown and we can proceed by clicking the Confirm and Add button. The system confirms that the volume we selected. We confirm that the host is added with the status of running in the certificate column set to verified. We proceed to the next step by clicking next. It's ready for import, so we can proceed to the next step by clicking next. In the set import schedule step, we can select when we want the import to start, either immediately or select a date and time. In our case, we keep it to begin immediately. Then we can also see we have the option to set the card over to start automatically. In our case, we leave it blank and proceed to the next step by clicking next. In the next step, we can go ahead and assign a protection policy to our volume. Let's select the volume and click the assign policy button. We can see that we have a couple of policies. We will go ahead, select the hourly snaps protection policy and click apply. Then click Next. In the last step, we can see the different settings that we have set for our volume, and we can proceed to start the import by selecting the Begin Import button. In the Imports page, we can see that the new import session is created with the state in progress. We'll go ahead and click Refresh to see that the import session gets updated to Copy in Progress state. We click the State column in order to see the import session details. In the site panel that opens, we can see a couple attributes, including the estimated completion time, current transfer rate, average transfer rate, and import progress. Then we click close. To see the different options that we have for the import session, we can select it and click the import action button, which shows that for the current state, we can either cancel or pause the import session. We won't make any changes and proceed to select the source resource name column, which takes you to the volumes page. We can see how the system automatically created a volume for the LUN that we are importing. The current status of the volume is set to importing is in progress. We won't make any changes and proceed back to the imports page. We proceed to verify the details of the import session once again and then click close. And after some time, we come back again and refresh the page. Now we can see that the import session is in the state ready for card over. We proceed to select it and select the card over action under the import actions. A confirmation dialog opens, suggesting us to confirm that we still have access to the volume we are importing. We proceed to the host and confirm that the video is still playing. And come back to the Power Store Manager and select the Cutover button. Now we can see that the state for the import session changes to Import Completed. We can proceed to confirm the details for the volume imported. We navigate to the Volumes page and click the name of the volume to see its properties. We can see the capacity. We can also see the protection policy that we had added as part of the import 
has been assigned to it. And lastly, we can see that the host was automatically mapped to the volume. As a final check, we go back to the host and we can see that we still can access the data. This is the end of the demonstration. For additional information, please review the following documentation and visit the PowerStore Info Hub. Thank you for viewing this PowerStore video.